Welcome to my channel. I'm the 20th and this video is Remove Corrupt Judge Lawrence Riff from the Bitch. Okay, this video is going to be specifically about having Judge Lawrence P. Riff removed from the family court. If you're new here, I'm a victim of a hate crime by three Los Angeles Family Court judges. Um, Judge Lawrence Riff, Judge Bruce Awasaki, and Judge Sarah Heidel. Uh, judge Lawrence Riff is the assistant supervising judge of the Los Angeles Family Court. And it's my understanding that the Los Angeles Family Court is the largest family court in the country. And um, I venture to say Los Angeles Family Court is the most corrupt family court in the country. So again, this video is going to be about um, asking you to help me have Judge Lawrence Riff removed from the family court. And um, if you're not familiar with my case, um, I'll try to give you a quick um, summary. I'm a victim of racial discrimination. It's my belief that my um, rights under the 14th Amendment have been um, violated because I'm a black woman and I was married to a white male wealthy um, man who happens to be a um, abusive alcoholic. I was married to him for 23 years. And we, we started going through a divorce in, I believe, 2018. And these three racist judges maligned me. They did all kind of horrible things. And please don't immediately knee-jerk think this is about a divorce that went wrong. This is about abuse of discretion. More importantly, this is about a hate crime committed by three Los Angeles family court judges. One of which is this gentleman, I meant to say gentleman, Judge Lawrence Schrift. Again, he's a supervising judge of the family court. And the second uh, judge, this guy here, Judge Bruce Awasaki. Judge Bruce Awasaki, all of this is always um, challenging emotionally and mentally for me. Okay, because I'm a victim of racial discrimination. Um, I'm in a hotel and I'm homeless. If you don't know my story, I'm homeless because Judge Sarah Heidel had um, sheriff deputies break in my house on September 23rd of 2020 at 8.30 at night. They broke down my door, broke in my home, and he illegally um, threatened to arrest me if I didn't leave my home. Um, I, I'll uh, link that video below. Um, the only reason why I'm saying this portion because I want you to know the heinous things that they did to me. That's one of, 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 of many that they did. But the primary um, violation, Judge Lawrence Schrift, um, Bruce Awasaki, and Judge Sarah Heidel, they retaliated against me in the divorce because I spoke out early on in the, in the divorce case that um, the rulings were presidential um, uh, prejudicial, I'm thinking that properly, in favor of the white male that I married. Um, the rulings were against California family um, law. Um, I don't want to get too much into that. I want to give you just a quick understanding of what he did. Okay, guys, I'm getting my thoughts together, and I want to point this out because it's very important that I tell you this. Um, this is about Judge Lawrence Riff, who is the uh, supervising judge of the family court. But he enlisted this man, Bruce Awasaki. And it's always hard for me because I know they gave this to him. And this is an Asian American. And Asian people are abused just like black people. Okay? I want to talk about... See, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. I want to make excuses for him, but I can't. This man, Judge Bruce Awasaki, was previously a director of the ACLU. Not only was he a director of the ACLU, his parents were Japanese, his piece, Japanese American, his parents were in a concentration camp. 
Can you imagine the atrocities his parents probably endured being Japanese in the concentration camp? That he probably knows firsthand how white people can be abusive and do heinous acts. And this man, Judge Bruce Awasaki, he, in terms of everything, he harmed me the most. He lied. He made up stories. I'm not going to go into everything that has happened, but he harmed me the most. And um, I'm going to talk about this on this channel because this is about Judge Lawrence Ripps and why he should be removed from the family court um, of Los Angeles. And let me briefly tell you what Judge Lawrence Riff did. I was in a divorce with a white male abusive alcoholic. And this woman here, Judge Sarah Heidel, was the judge in my case. And I believe she had she knew the guy that I was married to. Um, you can find out, I'm not going to go into great detail about that. You can find out about um, all about my case on Judge Sarah Heidel's racist.com or the videos on this channel. What happened is that to tell my divorce, in 2018, the man that I married abandoned me, okay? And he was the primary um, wage earner. I sustained a back injury, uh, I think in 2008. So I hadn't been employed in over 10 years. Um, I've been in an abusive relationship with this man for over 23 years. He's an abusive alcoholic. He's a white male abusive alcoholic. And um, he left in 2018. I didn't ask for spousal support because I didn't want to have anything to do with him. Although I was clearly due spousal support. The guy I married makes over $15,000 a month. Okay. And we were married for 23 years, a long-term marriage. This woman, Judge Sarah Heidel, failed to provide spousal support to me. Okay. And she did a lot of, she did a lot of things that were um, questionable. It wasn't questionable, which is just blatantly egregious and abuse of discretion. So the attorney I had refunded my um, deposit and told me to file a motion to have this woman removed, Judge Sarah Heidel. It's a whole lot to this, and I want to go and deep into the story. When I attempted to have her removed, this man, Judge Lawrence Riff, intervened. Okay? I'm going to briefly tell you some of the highlights that are important. You know what? I'm going to not do that. They, <laughs> I'm struggling because they've done all kind of stuff and I am going to pursue this in court. They've lied on transcripts, falsified transcripts of the departments of a party, the Commission on Judicial Review. There's different parties um, that are um, a party, how should I say, or um, in cahoots with the, these judges. And the, 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 the primary, the, the initial uh, violation was Judge Sarah Heidel violating my rights by not following the California Family Code, okay? When I was instructed to have her removed, multiple court officers, along with this judge, Lawrence Riff, evaded the process of having her disqualified. And what actually occurred, this man, Judge Lawrence Riff, retaliated against me for filing this motion to have this woman removed. There are a few things that I see. I'm, I'm, I, I'm hesitant on saying all the specifics because they lie. They have the court reporter um, falsifying the transcripts. So when I say things, they just they lie and they change this to fit their narrative. Okay, but I want to demonstrate to you why this man, Judge Lawrence Riff, should not be the supervising judge in Los Angeles Family Court. Judge Sarah Heidel passed me to Judge Lawrence Riff. The first time I went before him, I told him that she was biased, ruling in favor of this white male. That I was on food stamps. And this man's W-2s showed that he made 15000 between fourteen dollars and $15,000 a month. 
and I was on food stamps. This is the judge. This is the assistant family court judge of Los Angeles. I went in his courtroom and told him I was on food stamps, and this man makes over fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars a month. That should have been a red flag. I also told him that Judge Sarah Heidel was biased. The words he said to me was, that's your opinion. Okay? And I want you guys to listen because I want, when I'm trying to communicate to you guys intelligently as critical thinkers, why this judge, Lawrence Riff, should not be the judge. It's not just because he violated me, but this has to do with um, his ability to be um, fair, okay? And his, his critical thinking ability. He's a racist, in my opinion, okay? But I'm going to demonstrate to you how, as a judge, that he should not be sitting on the bench. When I said that Judge Sarah Heidel was ruling against me um, uh, biasly because I'm black, the judge, at minimum, should acknowledge my statement. At minimum, he should have questioned this woman, Judge Sam Hydell, had been a judge for less than two months. Excuse me, two years. Judge Lawrence Riff had been the assistant judge of the family court for maybe three years by this time. Okay? When I said to him, she's ruling, she's, she's showing bias because I'm black. His words to me was, that's your opinion. Him saying that's your opinion is implying that he believes that this woman is not racist. If he's the judge, his job is to fact find and to rule equitably. And in order to do that, he has to have the information. When he said, it's my opinion, he is insinuating that he disagrees with me. He's insinuating that he believes her not to be without any evidence. Again, this is a judge who was assistant family court judge for less than three years, or about three years, the judge we're referring to had been a judge for less than two years. Okay? This is the corruption in California. So what happened was I filed a motion to have her removed. With the motion filed, they were not supposed to do anything. According to California, I believe it's, um, it might be uh, Civil Procedure 170.1, California Civil Procedure, 17.1, when you file a motion to have a judge removed, disqualified, everything associated with the case is supposed to halt and stop. He did none of that. I'm not going to go into detail. Not only did he not follow the law, he sat on the bench, I believe it was January the 2nd or the 7th, 2020. He lied about me. He made up stories. He lied. He sanctioned me. And his purpose, how he sanctioned me, he said that I couldn't um, submit any financial information regarding the divorce. Okay? That was him tr trying to stick a dick in my ass. Forgive me. Saying, fuck you, stay in your place, nigga, for challenging us. Okay? Forgive my um, speech, my, my vernacular, but this is I, this is what is happening. Okay? On... January is either January 2nd, January 7th. We had two court dates in January 2020. He sat on the bench and made up a lie. He lied about orders. He lied. Everything I'm saying to you can't be corroborated. Okay. Once I, once I raise enough money to get investigators or get the, um, the federal court to investigate it's going to show. This is why it's so egregious. Everything he did to me can be proven. It, it, it doesn't require a lot. He stood in court, made up lies about me, he made up lies to sanction me. And that was his way of saying, nigga, stay in your place. Remember how they used to beat us like this? Remember how they used to beat us? That was him saying, nigga, stay in your place. Not only did he make up lies about me and sanction me, and he told me that I couldn't submit financial information. You guys, I haven't had a job since 20, 2008. By the grace of God, the guy I married, his attorney, um, submitted my Social Security wages for the past 10 years. Okay? I don't think I've made $20,000 in 10 years. 
The man I married makes at least $220,000 today. And I'm homeless. And I'm not getting spousal support. Okay? So, again, what he did was he illegal sanctioned me. You can find um, this information on Judge Sarah Heidel's racist. Okay? The, trans the transcripts and the documents are on there. Specific stuff about my cases on Judge Sarah Heidel's racist. This um, video is... Help me. I, I'm, I haven't decided on what I'm going to name it. It's going to be um, Remove Corrupt Judge Lawrence Riff from the Bench. I will probably, I, I'm not, will probably, I am going to build a website um, to um, make people aware that I'm looking for other victims of this man, Judge Lawrence Riff. Okay. Um, what he also did was he had me removed. He had me removed from the court. When I was trying to speak, he told the bailiff to, to have me removed for no reason. The transcripts are on Judge Sarah Heidel's recess. Um, and this is and this is really crazy. When I say this to you because I'm a critical thinker, if anyone was telling me anything, I take nothing face value. If some woman was online complaining, I'd be like, oh, she's just mad. I would click start reading. If you investigate. I did nothing. I did nothing. The reason why I'm pursuing this because I'm a black woman in America. This judge, Lawrence Riff, brought me psychological and physical harm for no other reason than I'm a black woman. In Los Angeles, I need you to understand, if he did it to me, he did it to me so blatantly because he felt like he can get away with it. Um, but if he is... Uh, had that issue, that much of an issue with a moral compass. I was in an abusive relationship with a white male who abused me regularly. I submitted letters dating back to 1993 of this man apologizing to me. And this judge here, Judge Bruce Awasaki, he found me as the abuser when I did nothing. I put up with this man's alcoholic abuse. For 23 years. When he left, I didn't even, spouse, I didn't even apply for spouse support because he was not good for my psyche. Okay, you guys, I want to stay focused. Um, I want, I, this video is about Judge Lauren Schriff. This video is to request that you guys help me have him removed from the bench. I am, I'm going to eventually build a website so you guys can leave comments. Tell me stories or share whatever, okay? And one of the primary reasons why I'm doing this, there's a website called The Robing Room. The Robing Room, over two years ago, posted a message that said, we are no longer taking any more comments about Judge Lawrence Riff. There were over 95 comments complaining about him as a judge. The Robing Room said, um... We will no longer be accepting any comments about Judge Lawrence Riff until we expand our network, okay, or, or our platform. So I assume eventually they're just trying to, like, stop people from coming on there complaining. It was maybe really taken up too much. She had over 95 complaints last time I looked, okay? I've gone back and looked. They're still not taking complaints. So for me, I don't, I'm not trying to imply anything about the robing room. But I'm showing you the level of corruption in the family court of Los Angeles. I'm showing you just corruption. And because this happened to me, I know what they did and how they did it, how easily they did it. Um, on, my, on this channel, I haven't finished. I've got so much video and content about what they've done. Voicemail, um, me recording the clerks, me recording police officers, sheriffs. <clears throat> I've struggled with putting this content together because it's hard for me psychologically. I'm trying to heal myself and I'm adding the information online to, 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 to um, demonstrate what they did and the challenge I'm having getting um, justice. But this video is about help me have Judge Lawrence Riff removed and to bring the uh, awareness See, I'm, I'm, it's things in my mind I'm really struggling, you guys. 
my goal is for you guys to see this video. My goal is for you to say, you know what, Judge Lawrence Priv did this to me. What my goal is for you guys to say, the Los Angeles Family Court did this to me. Okay? If this is the assistant judge of the Los Angeles Family Court, if he not only defended a subordinate, but he's supposed to be a supervising judge, if he defended her, when all they had to do, this has been years, they brought me great harm. All they had to do was treat me fair. I was married to a white, wealthy man for 23 years. He was a primary wage earner. California is a no-fault community property state. All they had to do was look at our assets equally, split them in half, and 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 pay and, and uh, award me spousal support like they would have a black a white woman who was married for twenty three years to an abusive alcoholic who makes over a hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. Okay, all they had to do was treat me equal. This happened to me because I'm black. Black people, I need you guys to pull up and help me. But non-black people, I'm a, I'm gonna put some video in here about this man. He harmed me without blinking an eye. Okay? He harmed me without thinking an eye because he could. This is abuse of discretion. This is abuse of authority. America, we need a reset. And I'm asking you to help me. I'm going to edit some stuff in about this judge. As you all know, today we're talking with Judge Lawrence Riff, Supervising Judge of the Los Angeles County Superior Court Family Law Division. Judge Riff calls his path to the bench unusual, and we're going to explore that. In short, Midwesterner by upbringing, on to the University of Michigan, became a healthcare data analyst in Portland right out of school, uh, before ultimately graduating from the University of Oregon School of Law. His first job out of law school was as an in-house counsel for the Southern Pacific Railroad in San Francisco as a civil jury trial lawyer which led to a long career in private practice, culminating with a two decade run as the managing partner of Steptoe and Johnson's LA office and a member of the firm's executive committee. At that 600 plus attorney firm, he was also the national practice group leader for environmental and toxic tort litigation. So about six years ago, after 33 years of practice and taking more than 45 cases to jury verdicts in state and federal courts, he was appointed to the LA Superior Court. If that wasn't enough, here's where the plot really thickens. Up to that point, he had never set foot in a family law courtroom. And as we all know, today he's the supervising judge for the biggest family law division in the country, a role that he sees as, quote, being at the intersections between the aspirations of the judges, the needs of the family law community, and the operational realities of the court. Um. As, I, as you noted, I was the managing partner of a pretty busy office of an international firm for two decades. I was a practice group leader. I've been on a bunch of other committees. So the idea of how organizations work was not foreign to me. So um, when Judge Buckley asked if I would serve in that capacity, of course, I said yes. He would not ask if he, you know, if that was his ask and the answer was yes. Less clear to me, to be honest with you, is whether I would be asked to take over as supervising judge when Judge Lewis retired. And um, that was Judge Brazil's call. And I didn't know what would happen. There's a long tradition in the Superior Court. Sometimes, frankly, in my view, he, he took a risk on me. And um, he asked and I said yes. That was roughly two years ago. And I think I've grown into the job. Court I'd operations like is its own thing. And as a lawyer, you don't know anything about it or not much. And as a judge, most of us don't know anything about it. But here's what's funny to me. I think a lot of people think because I'm sitting in department two, I'm actually an expert on family law, which I'm not. I know enough family law. I've been doing it for four years and I'm, I'm not a slouch, but people call me 
thinking that Tom Lewis is going to pick up the phone. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know as much family law as Tom Lewis. But you do. <laughs> but I'm doing okay. I'd like to. Th I'd like to think. And so, when you started out um, in the family law division, how do you think you were received, um, both by the division and by the bar? Well, I think by the bar, I was received with, um, well, bafflement might be too strong a word, <laughs> but I, I think a lot of folks in the bar were of the view, who is this guy and why is he in that chair? Mm. Um, I think among my colleagues on the bench, you know, at that point, I pretty much knew everybody, although I didn't know everybody well. You know, I'd been in a home court. I'd been in a dedicated trial court. And I look, I think there were plenty of people, plenty of our judicial officers who asked the same question. Why is Riff in that chair? What does he know about family law? And look, there may be people to this day that are of that view. Hard to say. So you, I would like to think, I'll just finish. Yeah. You know, people are very nice to you when you're the supervising judge, I will tell you. Certainly publicly, they're very nice to you. And the bar over the last two years has been really nice to me, very warm, very accommodating. I think very forgiving of some of my novice moves. I hope by now I've established some bona fides with the bar that even if I don't know everything that is in the rudder guide, I still am capable of the operational aspects of being the supervising judge. On the law itself, uh, I, I can only imagine when a long tenured practitioner says something, kind of what you alluded to in a uh, self-deprecating way, uh, let me explain how Judge Lewis or Judge Black would rule, or in my 40 years, I've never seen, you've only been here for four. What, what, what do you think? What do you do? Well, it comes up all the time. It used to come up more. It, it well, that's was, progress. It, that's good. It sound, Dan, it would sound something like this. And, and, and the lawyer would try not to be patronizing, but of course, you know, how can you of not course. be patronizing of in course. that situation? Yeah. But it's like, well, Judge Riff, I really appreciate that you've read everything and I'm sure you're very well prepared, but I know that you're new to family law and I would like you to know that I've been doing this for 40 years and I'd like you to know, you know, how Judge Black used to handle this and how Judge Lax used to handle this and how Judge Rothschild used to handle this and Tom Lewis, for God's sake, this is what he would do in your situation. And... I was never offended by that, Dan, I, and I'm, I'm really not offended. It's just not helpful, I will tell you. It's not helpful. Okay, you guys, so you saw that I um, edited that video in. That video is from the Bar Association of Beverly Hills. I'm not 100% um, knowledgeable of the nature of the Bar Association, but I do find, plan to file a, um, a complaint with the Bar Association against Judge Lawrence Riff. Um, this, that interview was by someone by the name of Dan Bemmel and Lauren Youngman. And I edited that video in there so you guys can um, get a taste of who this is. Um, I have a physical um, effect from this man. I had to listen and... Um, I had to listen to that to edit it in, and it's in a few things that um I want to talk about. So I don't know if you recognize the judge is very arrogant. Um, and what concerns me about our community is that we think it's acceptable. Okay, arrogance is not just not a place for arrogance in the judicial system, but we see it every day. That's why if you're a non-black person, you also want to be um, involved or help me 
um, because my ultimate goal is to um, for there to be a correction in the in, in the American um, judicial system, not just for Black people, but for all people. But there's a few things he said. So as we know, this man is the assistant supervising judge of the largest family court in the country. And he admits to himself that he is not a family law judge. His background is operations. He's an administrator. And I understand that I, the person I married had a similar skill set. He's very prompt. Um, he's very organized. Um, he's pretty good at delegating authority. But being the ability to critical think, the guy I married wasn't a very good critical thinker. Okay? And I'm, I'm only... I'm sharing that with you because Judge Lawrence Riff, I know the personality. Okay? I'm very familiar with that personality. Um, he's probably good with deadlines and um, being prompt, being on time. That's organization. Okay? But his ability to, to think critically, his ability to interpret law, he says himself that he's not that great. He's, he says he's not a slouch, but I, I, I beg to differ. Either you, you, either you are a slouch or you hate black people, Judge Lawrence Riff. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to talk about. So he said he was a novice. His background is operations. And one of the things that I want to highlight is he said how people are nice to him. People are nice to him. People are really nice to assistant judge. And please follow along how he outlines what the things that he finds important. Okay? What I think, you guys, Judge Lauren Schrift and Judge Sarah Hydell were both new judges. Both, both new to the family court. Um, Judge Sarah Hydell is the kind of personality of, and lawyers, you already, I've been talking to you, y'all already see it. She, she doesn't like women. She doesn't, not, she doesn't like black women, but she doesn't like women. She's the kind of person, you know, the kind of girl who's always like, you know, like, you know, kissing up to men, being nice to the guys in class, being nice to the guys at work, rolling your eyes at women or saying sarcastic, smart stuff to women. That's who she is. And what I suspect he says he's married, but I've read content about him being a pervert and stuff. What I think is he's probably trying, he was trying to sleep with her. And this is, and I might, I could be off base. Um, because for him, I, I don't know what he, if you research, if you have any questions, go to justsaverhydeldirection.com or see the videos on this channel. If you have any questions about what he did to me, how, what, how they brought me harm, ask, ask me. I did nothing to deserve all the things they did to me. And so when I think this is a judge he has who has no more compass, what propels him to bring me harm? And as my mind, because I'm a black woman, and I don't matter. And he has this white woman who clearly, who he's supposed to supervise, who is clearly not supervising. He's retaliating against me instead of doing his job. And the thing that I want to highlight is the corruption in the Los Angeles Family Court. This video is help me have Judge Lawrence Riff removed from the Family Court. Um, I'm making this video in hopes that other people, and please understand, you don't have to be a black person. Um, over 90-something people com uh, complained about Judge Lawrence Riff on the robing room. Some guy went ham and said that he had ties to um, Harvey Weinstein. Okay? That's why I'm making this video. Because you people in Los Angeles know about this judge. And y'all know the corruption that he's done. Okay? I really want to highlight the part about him saying that people are nice to him. So, what I think is he... Looks for people to kiss up to him. I think he's the kind of um, managing supervisor that plays favorites. If you do favorites for him, if you kiss his butt, if you're nice to him, 
he'll look kindly on you or do something to help you. You know, how he got judged Bruce Alasaki to bring me harm, I don't know how he was able to do that. I, I, I don't know how he was able to do that. Um, but uh, I edited him in so you guys can see a little bit about who he is. Um, I want to tell you some more stuff. So okay, so what I want to talk about is the corruption in the Los Angeles Family Court and about backroom dealings. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm investigating and I'm making this video and I'm going to make a website about Judge Lawrence Riff because I'm looking for you people to help me. Um, when you see he, how he talked about people are nice to him, the so Los Angeles Family Court is corrupt. Um, it's this agency is called the Levette and Quinn Family Law. They are the Judge Lawrence Riff. Here, okay. This is me investigating. What ends up happening is I talk to lawyers, and he's not the brightest lawyers. They always drop a hint that they have some kind of dealings with Judge Lawrence Riff, or they know something, okay? So, Levette and Quinn Family Law. This is supposed to be a nonprofit family law. They honored a judge. Why would they honor the supervising family court judge who's been a judge who's been a supervising um, family court judge for less than a couple of years? Why would they honor him? Okay. What I'm demonstrating to you guys is the corruption in the Los Angeles family court, and it's headed by Judge Lawrence Riff. Um, while I was sitting here looking for content, I discovered something. Um, one of the attorneys that I called, her name is Attorney Graves, Demetrius Graves. This is a black woman. And what this black woman said, um, and this information is documented. This is Demetrius Graves of Demetrius Graves Law Firm. This is a black woman. You guys, this has been really very hard for me. Um, Los Angeles does not have black attorneys that are working in the benefit of black people. I hate to say that, but no black attorneys trying to help me um, because it is a good old boy network. It is a white supremacist collective conscious in America and California's Jim Crow. Let me tell you what this Demetria Graves said to me. When I called her to discuss my case, this is what she said. She asked me, why do I want to take, go back to the same court system that violated me? Miss, you don't want to try me. I record everything. I record everything. She said to me, why would I want to take, go back to the same system that abused me? You guys, when I was looking for this court case, Levette and Quinn Family Law, because I was looking for the photos where they, um, where they honored Judge Lawrence Riff, this Demetri Graves is on the board of directors for the Levette and Quinn Family Law. I don't know who they are or what they are, but I, I, I question why would they honor a judge? That seems like a conflict of interest, okay? Um, I want you guys to see this. This woman, Demetria Graves, and I have court, I have, I have phone records, I got emails. I'm not a dumb black girl. Even black women think black people are dumb. I'm not a dumb black girl. I'm in pain and I'm suffering, but I serve a good, good God. And my God said, if anyone can do this. Issue. I am suffering, but I love black people. And when a and I, I, I'm, this is another black woman. What this woman said to me, I want you to understand what she said to me. She's on the board of directors for this Levette and Quinn family law. What I'm trying to demonstrate to you guys that this is a racket. That um, the family law uh, uh, department of Los Angeles is corrupt, and this video is to. Bring awareness and to have you message me, contact me if you had any um, 
problems with the Family Court of Los Angeles, specifically Judge Lawrence Riff, please contact me because it is my purpose to have this man removed from the Los Angeles Family Court. This woman, this is hurting me so bad, you guys, because I just saw her name on this on this Levette and Quinn family law. She's on the board of directors. This, them trying to give business. Them, this is it, it is a racket. The black woman said to me, Demetri Graves, why would I want to bring go back to the same system that harmed me? And I'm sitting on the phone like black lady, if I thought this, we thought this way, we'd be still picking cotton. If you know anything about this, this um, Levent and Quinn family law, if you know anything about, I don't know, um, they keep coming up. Um, <laughs> I can't say everything that I want to say because I really am. I'm going to file a lawsuit against the state of California. And let me tell you, I got heavy weight of everything they've done to me. All you attorneys that email me and call me and things. One of the one one of the attorneys, yeah, I I, I noticed you were one of the donate donators to this Levet and Quinn family law. Yeah, my biggest asset is they always think I'm a dumb black girl. Um, this video is remove Judge Lawrence Riff from the bench. Help me have Judge Lawrence Riff removed. Um, if you know anything. I'm probably going to do a website. I, I've got a lot of different things going on right now. In the next month or two, probably the next month, it won't take me long to build a website. I'm going to build a website about this judge. Um, the robing room will no longer accept complaints about this judge. If you have any questions, concerns, ideas on helping me, message me. Um, you can find my Instagram on this channel. My Twitter on this channel. My email on this channel. We need to clean up the Los Angeles Family Court. And I'm struggling here because for me, this is about black people. What, what, what propelled me is that there's a white supremacist collective conscious in America that white people are superior and we are inferior. Okay, it is further demonstrated not only are white people a part of this white supremacist collective conscious, black people are. This woman said to me, why would I want to bring back, go back to the same system that violated me? This is what this Demetri Graves said to me. It's a family law, it's a black family law attorney. Um, Miss Graves, because I love black people, I love black people like I love air. And I know we all are not the same. Many of us don't understand. They do this to us because they can. Okay, guys, let's, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm really, I'm angry and I'm upset. I'm not thinking straight because seeing that lady on the board of directors for that company really upset me. Her saying that to me stayed with me for a very long time. Um, let me stay focused here. This uh, video is remove Judge Lawrence Riff from the bench. Help me have corrupt Judge Lawrence Riff removed from the bench. Um, it is February the 1st, uh, 2022. I'm making this video. I will eventually build a website. Um, and on that website is going to talk about Judge Lawrence Riff. So um, if you are privy to anything about the corruption of Judge Lawrence Riff, or any other association with him and other organizations um, or attorneys or lawyers, if you know anything that is corrupt, please message me. Again, I am going to build a website because um, the robing room is no longer accepting complaints about this man. I will probably eventually um, do some kind of, um, you know, signature to have him removed, like, I don't know, like, you know, I don't know, they have, like, different, like, organizations, action.com, I'm not, not saying it properly, ma'am, you guys, I'm struggling here, seeing that lady on the board of directors really hurt me, because, um, I, I'm not going to be able to get free treated fairly in this state, in this city of Los Angeles, because the Los Angeles family court system is corrupt, and, um, 
I was doomed from the very beginning because I was married to a white man and I'm a black woman and I don't matter. And um, this is really, seeing that woman on that board of directors, and when she said it to me, I was on the phone like, what did you say? Please help me have Judge Lawrence Riff removed from the bench of the Los Angeles Family Court. If you have any stories or any information you can provide to help me demonstrate that this man should not be sitting on the bench of the Los Angeles Family Court, please message me. Um, if you know of any other issues in the Los Angeles Family Court, you know, this is the thing that I'm saying. This man is a supervising family uh, judge. If he did not, this, all he had to do was step in with this woman, Judge Sarah Hydell. You guys, all he had to do was step in, make me call, and we could have moved forward. On January 2nd, 2020, 20, I, 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 I was rested because I slept. I, I have insomnia. I have a bad thing with insomnia. And I thought this man was a good judge, that it was no longer in her hands, that I had this man. I was feeling good. Like, okay, we're going to get this stuff done. This man illegally sanctioned me. He violated all my rights under the 14th Amendment um, as a black woman. I'm saying to you guys, let me explain to black people. Under the 14th Amendment, we are to be treated equally. I'm going to, without a shadow of a doubt, demonstrate that I was no, no way treated equally. I am homeless. I have been homeless since September 23rd, 2021. Okay? Excuse me. September 23rd, 2020. They put me and my son illegally in the street during COVID. But for my son, I would be homeless in the street. And it was headed by this man, Judge Lawrence Riff. I'm going to build a website. I haven't thought. If you guys have any ideas of what I should name the website, um, leave a comment. I don't know if I must. Uh, it should be. I want corrupt Judge Lawrence Riff. Remove corrupt Judge Lawrence Riff. Help me clean up Los Angeles Family Court. Have Judge Lawrence Riff removed from the bench. You know what, you guys? I I um I have to stop. Um, if you listen this long, if you have any questions, um, please message me. I'm going to probably, again, get signatures to um, have him removed. Because what I know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this. If this man did this to, 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 this to me, and he was so brazen. I didn't know he hadn't been a judge. He hadn't been on the bench in the family court for, for less than four years. I didn't know that. I learned that by watching that video of the Beverly Hills um, Bar Association. Okay? As I sit here and I make this video, I research stuff. I got tons of evidence. Okay? And I've been keeping evidence. So eventually I am going to file a lawsuit against the state of California. It's not these judges. These judges, they have the um, Commission on Judicial Review. It's different agencies that and um, places you go or procedures you do in when you have this issue. And no one, the federal court, the appeals court, I have been... My civil rights under the 14th Amendment have been violated, okay? And more than anything, I need to shine a light on the Family Court of California. Again, I'm a black woman. This happened to me because I'm a black person. Please don't be afraid to share your story with me. I've had Asian women email me and tell me about what these judges have done to them, okay? Um, don't be afraid. This is about corruption in the family court. This specific incident is that I was violated because I'm a black woman. Again, I want you to understand, this man I married for 23 years makes at least $200,000 a year. I'm homeless and I've been on food stamps since March of 2019. As I sit here and I investigate, I'm learning the Los Angeles Family Court is corrupt. And I'm asking you to help me clean up the Los Angeles family court. This happened to me because I'm a black woman. But that man was so brazen. 
in the video you saw, he says, oh, people are nice to me. People are nice to me. You guys, I don't know that man, but I, but I'm, I'm, I'm a cancer and I'm an empath and I just, I have, I have the, um, gifts of intuition and what is hurtful to me is that what I believe about him is that he's a godly man. When I said I served a good God, when I would talk to him, his body language would say, his body language would say, I believe he is spiritual or religious and he knows about um, a higher power. How he was able to do the stuff he did to me without a conscience for no reason. Judge Lawrence Rift should not be on the bench in any capacity. And I'm asking you guys to help me. Um, again, I, I'm struggling with seeing that girl's name on that Levin and Quinn board of directors. It just keeps showing me what I'm up against. Um, I don't I don't call California. I'm calling lawyers in the East Coast to help me because I'm not going to get a fair trial in Los Angeles. I'm not going to get attorneys to help me. The Los Angeles Family Court is corrupt. And so um, thank you for listening. If you can help me in any way, if you have any stories about Judge Lawrence or for any other judges that you know your rights were violated and, and, and demonstrate corruption in the family court, please message me. I will eventually build a website about Judge Lawrence Ruff. Thank you so much.